In this video, I will do a short tutorial on the Shapely package in Python. This package can be used to do a variety of polygon operations. I will start with a little bit of motivation on why you would want to do this and then look at some specifics of how to call the Python interfaces. Here I have my walkthrough script. It imports a variety of things. Uh, I will be using the mathplotlib package in order to display the geometries that I'll talk about. Uh, note that in, in my Ubuntu, I was not able to install the most recent matplotlib, but following the advice of this Stack Overflow answer, I simply installed a, uh, an older version. So if you have some trouble on Ubuntu, uh, now that's something that you might consider. Uh, here I have some functions that actually will display various geometries for me. I will not go into those at the moment. First, let's start with a bit of a little demo. So I will call my script. First thing that I'm showing you here is two polygons using the multi-polygon box constructors. Uh, box will give you one polygon. Multi-polygon is a container that can hold multiple polygons. In this case, I give it the bounding box of the polygons here from 0, 0 to 10, 100, and so on. And you can see that uh, being displayed here. Note that in matplotlib, the plots will always be the shape regardless of what the coordinates are. So rectangles may look square, squares may look rectangle. So here, that's just two simple uh, polygon that this section. Moving along to the next one. Now we have four boxes. We have two base boxes that we had before. That's the blue and the green. We have this box inflated. The actual name of the API for uh, Shapely is buffer, but inflation is simply the word that I'm used to using. And I'm sure that if I try to do buffer tutorial, I will just mess it up. So here I took the original box and I buffer it, which means that you expand it, you inflate it uh, by seven in this case. So this yellow orange box is an inflation of blue and this red box is an inflation. Note that I have this join style. If you don't put this, then you will get rounded corner, which maybe is what you want, uh, but in this case, it's not. So that's what I'm showing here. All right, next we have this snippet here. So what I did here is I take the first inflated box and I intersect it with the second inflated box. So the result of that is this purple violet thing. So why is this useful? Well, let's pretend that this blue and green are both wires that have to obey a certain spacing constraint. Um, in this case, this spacing constraint would be 14. And a way to find violations of that spacing constraint is simply by taking your wires, inflating them, buffering them, uh, taking an intersection of the two, and whatever comes out is an uh, indication of where you have a uh, where you have a problem. So in this case, for design rule checking, this uh, purple violet uh, square here, a rectangle would be uh, your, your design rule violate. All right, so what are some of the primitives that are available in Shapely? Well, first we have here a point that I have buffered without the join style or without any of the options. Here I have buffered it by five, and what that gives me then is a circle. And we see that here I have something with at the origin of 10, 20, and we see that it goes by five. In e. So that's a point turning into a circle. You can have lines. Here we have from 10, 20 up to 3040 uh, going into a line string. So a line string does not have to be contiguous. Here we have two lines that is generated with these things here. So we have one tuple here, and then we have a second tuple for the second. Moving along, we could take a line string that has more um, of these strings and create a polygon. Note that here I have them as tuples for individual lines. You don't have to do that. You can just list off all the point coordinates in order to make uh, a multi-line string. So in this case now I am using a new function that I haven't talked about yet called polygonize. So here we have a blue rectangle which was generated by uh, this, this snippet of code here. Here I am calling the constructor for a multi-line string with a variety of different arguments. This is basically just to show that you can mix and match. So here I have a line string constructor but then I also just have a tuple. So really each of these constructors don't absolutely require to use a specific object type. Uh, you just need to have them be uh, con list convertible to be the right thing. Here I have another tuple for the other lines within this poly. So I take this multi-line string and I pass it into the function polygonize, the new function that I haven't talked about yet. This one will take uh, a bunch of strings uh, the two in this case, we have this single uh, segment line string as well as a three uh, line segment line string. Put them together into this single polygon. Then here we have this next one. Here we have an outside boundary as well as a boundary that is contained within that. Now there isn't 
a correct answer on how this should be interpreted. It could be two polygons on top of each other, or it could be two polygons, uh, one of which is a hole inside of the first. So polygonize actually gives you a variety of results. So here we have um, the snippet here. So the first result that it gives you is going from 0, 0 to 10, 10. So in this case, it's important to actually pay attention to what the coordinates are so that you know uh, which of these pieces we're talking. So here we have 0, 0 all the way up to 10, 10. And then inside of that, we have from 5, 5 up to uh, 7, okay? So now looking at the next polygon returned by polygonize, we have here just this 5 to 7. And so th those are the two results that it gives you. It gives you a result of the outer boundary treating the child as a whole, or you can choose to ignore the holes and then it gives you um, an outer body of just the child. So we've, we've created a number of objects here. Let's take a look. So first let's look at this snippet here. We've got P1. P1 here is a point object. Looking at its APIs, we got a long list. Uh, the one that we really care about here is P1 chords. Okay, so it gives you coordinates in this coordinate sequence object. Not very helpful. This is one of the biggest stumbling blocks that I had in running uh, Shapely is just being able to run this thing here in the interactive Python window just to kind of get a feel for how things are going. Uh, but really, the, the, the way around that is easy. You simply wrap it here in a list. You convert it to a list. And now we have the coordinates. So here we've got 10, 20 is the coordinates of the point. So let's look at this next snippet here. L1, again, is a line string. L1 chords. Okay, again, we have the sequence. And then we wrap a list around it. Now note that when you are using it in a for loop, you don't actually need to do the list because a for will automatically call the list interface uh, of these APIs. This list thing is mostly going to help you for when you are just trying to figure it out in the interactive uh, Python window. So here we have the coordinates as we passed them in originally. All right, moving along, we've got this multi-line string, which really is just a collection of line strings. So MLS1, again, list chords. Oh, so in this case, since we are iterating not through the coordinates of the line string, but rather uh, this is a collection of line strings, you actually need to get the line strings out of them first and then and then look at the coordinates. And so you'll see that here, I have a 4G in this geometries of this collection. So if we do MLS1 geoms, we have a sequence object. And as always, we convert to a list here so that we can see what we have. So then we could take that and take the coordinates directly of that. And of course, once again, list, we're looking at the first of the two line strings, the chord, all right? So move it along, we've got P2, okay, generator object, list, P2. So here we have an empty list, but when we look at the code here, it did plot something. So what happened? Well, the answer to that is that polygonize will give to you a generator, which you can then call to ask it to generate those polygons. So if we were to think of it as an iterator, I would have expected it to say, hey, can I restart the generator? Can I restart this iterator? I haven't found that, which we can see here in this interface. So let's simply do polygonize again. This time I will save the returned list into plies, right? So if we do plies here, we have one polygon that it gives us. If we were to do if we were to do list P2 again, we'll note that it's empty, right? Because we've used up this iterator and we're at the end. So either way, we do have the plies. So if we look at plies, the only element of it, we have a polygon, okay? The way that you then get the coordinates out of the polygon is we say, and let's to make things a little easier, poly equals this. So poly has an exterior, okay? A linear ring, which a linear ring is basically a line string except for that it is closed and it also has the restriction that it cannot be self intersect So where we have, we do list of exterior and we get the coordinates of that. And here we have the eye. poly will also have a list of interiors, which in this case is empty because again, we are looking at this first poly. So let's look at this last little snippet here from this section, polygonize MLS3. So applies equals list. And so here we have the two polygons. The first polygon is the bigger one that has a hole. And the second one is simply the hole. Uh, each of the polygons is given an opportunity to be an X. So let's look at poly equals applies zero. In this case, we have a linear ring that represents the interior of the, the polygon. So here we can do that then by doing chords. And of course we have to convert that to a list. And here we have the coordinates of the 
first of the first and only of the holes, the interiors of this polygon. All right, so that's the basic. So let's dig a little bit deeper into this whole exterior and whole thing. So coming back to my trusty little script here, turn off this first section and let's look at this guy here. All right, so here we have multiple levels of polygons. We've got this purple violet thing is the big out outer limit. We have an intermediate hole and then we have a small hole, another intermediate hole and another hole. That is what all of these coordinates here represent, okay? And that is what we are simply displaying here. I'm not polygonizing here. I'm simply showing all of the, the constituent components of this uh, multi-line string, okay? So now that I've shown all of the coordinates, remember that we're starting here from minus 50 going up to 50. We're going from zero to 10 and from five to seven, just like, okay? So now as we polygonize, we're now in this section here where we're displaying the polygons that was returned by this function. First, we are given one of the intermediate polygons from zero to 10, because remember the big ones go from minus 50 to plus, and it has a hole. Then we're given the hole within that guy, five to seven. Then we're given the other intermediate hole, the other intermediate hole, uh, the other intermediate holes, subhole. And last we have the top level. We have from minus 50 to 50 here with the intermediate hole here. In each case, we have only one level. You have an exterior and you have a hole. And that's what we have here. So one nice thing that the Shapely package gives you is uh, comparison operators. So here we have a contains method on each any particular object. And you can use that to sort the polygon. So that enables us to sort the returned uh, polygons that are given to us by polygonized so that we can first get the big ones and then kind of go down into the children. So here we are now doing the uh, sh showing. It should say actually say now showing and not, not showing. So now let's look at the sorted version here. So here I used the sorted function from Python. I give it the uh, class that is to be the comparison um, thing, and I give it the polygonized results that were given from Shapely. But note here that the, iter the, the order that we're given is still the same. So something didn't work. So now let's try to figure out why. So here we've got some polygons that is simply the list of polygonized uh, multi-line string four. That's the ones we've been working. So here we see whether whether this contains this, as well as in the reverse of the whether the first one contains uh, the other. So we'll note that they are both uh, false. Now it's a little bit surprising that it would say that zero doesn't contain one and one doesn't contain the other. Because when we look at the coordinates here, this one goes from zero, zero, to 10, 10, and this one here goes from 5, 5 to 7, 7, which that's inside of 0, 0 to 10, 10. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is that the first polygon, the first polygon contains a hole and the hole and the, and the boundary of that hole is the same as the second polygon. So because those boundaries are overlapping, one is not containing the other. So a way to get around that is by changing our comparison operator. So here, let's actually compare to what we had before. Before we would simply call, take the object and call contain on the other object. Here instead, we're going to take the exterior of the object, make a polygon out of that. So basically we're getting rid of the interior and then looking to see whether it contains the other object, okay? So really this polygonize and the exterior, that's the difference here. So let's run that and see what we get. So now we see that we have the top level 55 to 55, which before this was the one that was given to us last. And then we have the first child of that, we have its hole. We have the second child, child, and we have its. So now we are able to get the polygons in a top-down fashion. So this is probably a good place to stop. Stay tuned for part two. As always, please leave comments.